And good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Tanya Talks. I'm your host, Tanya Ricketts, and I am looking forward to this evening's talk as I'm joined this evening by, with Andrea, our guest, Andrea Bosco. And Andrea Bosco is joining us tonight as a wellness facilitator, and she helps individuals just like you um, through wellness seminars, through yoga and mindfulness practices. And she also works with individuals one-on-one -on -one through coaching. So she teaches you how to get to the next level for your life. I'm excited to have Andrea with us just before we begin and I introduce and have Andrea speak. I just wanna let you know that you can um, find Andrea. Andrea, sorry, I did miss. Andrea is a part of the Empowerment Project and you can learn more about the Empowerment Project on Facebook under the Empowerment Project page. And you can also learn about it on Instagram, on Empowerment, um, the Empowerment Project 2 on Instagram. Andrea can also be personally found on Instagram uh, at Andrea F. As in Frank Bosco and also on Facebook under Andrea Bosco. So that was a mouthful. Uh, Andrea is joining us this evening talking to us about making yourself a priority, what it looks like to make yourself a priority and by setting healthy boundaries in your life so that you can lead a more fulfilling life. So Andrea, thank you for being with us this evening. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you for having me. It's so yeah, it's exciting. So I'm looking forward to this chat, our yeah. little conversation. Um, so just share with us your personal experience and what it looked like for you to make yourself a priority. Say that, hey man, I, I, I gotta show up first for me first. Exactly. So. I think I like to start off by kind of backtracking as to growing up and how I was never really made to feel like I should be a priority. And so understanding why, and I think this happens for a lot of people, and, and I, I am go going to be bold and say a lot of women right. that... <laughs> that, you know, we feel this idea of being selfless is the greatest accolade you can give anyone. Yes. And right. And so growing up and, you know, I have a wonderful mother and she was an, a wonderful example of, of everything um, for me. But growing up in, in a European culture and you know, just understanding these cultural conditions that you grow up around and you see from your grandparents, your own parents, your friends' parents, it was just understood that as a woman, you serve everyone around you, right? And you kind of don't complain and you overwork yourself and um, you, you kind of put yourself at the bottom of the list. Right. And what happens when you come out of that box is deathly. Right? So it was so funny. Recently, I was watching a television program. Um, it's actually a really excellent program that Stanley Tucci is doing right now on basically eating through Italy. So my, my background is Italian and he went to this small town and where they were hunting rabbits. Okay. I don't, I don't eat rabbits. It's not about the rabbit, but the story goes that the tradition in this village and, and in many um, families, when you're, when you're cooking the rabbit and you're cutting it up and you're handing it out to the people at the table, the, the person who gets it first is the guest at the table. If there's no guest, it goes to the children and then the men and then the elders and then, and then, and then, and, and the cook who's usually the, the woman gets the remaining of the rabbit, which is the neck and the skull. <laughs> so I'm not even joking. When I, when I watched this last week, I turned to my husband and I said, we've been getting that neck and the skull <laughs> for generations. Like this is such a metaphor for women and, you know, what we give up and, you know, it's the scrappings from the barrel, the cold coffee, the cold, you know, and, and I know I'm generalizing, but it's just this idea that, you know, that's what you do. You are selfless. You give everything of yourself and, you know, you grin and bear it. Right. So, 
you know, I don't know if you experienced that as well growing up in, you know, in your family or just kind of just societal. Like, I feel like it's just societal, even in North America. I think I realized for me, um, and I didn't have boundaries and I wasn't a priority, but my narrative was different and, and everybody's got a different narrative. Um, you know, my narrative was more, I figured out at an early age that if my needs were present, that it was a burden. But I realized that if somebody else's, if I put somebody else's needs before myself, and you said it in the onset of this conversation, if I put somebody else's needs before my own, there was my acceptance. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you live this narrative that you don't exist because anytime that something has to feed you for you to receive something, it actually comes with the idea that it's a burden. It, it, it burdens somebody to get, get that to you. Yes. Yes. And it's sort of part of your, your worth and your value of, right. you know, how much can you give up of yourself and, and, and allow others to sort of succeed totally. So it was quite, it was quite challenging for me. It was hard. It wasn't even just challenging. It was extremely difficult for me to work against that in my own soul. And, and nobody else knew what I was struggling with. It was only <laughs> me. You know, but it was just like, heaven forbid that, you know, um, I added myself into the equation. Yeah. Exactly. That I became a priority in the equation with everybody else. Or even if I wasn't the hierarchy of priorities, it was even including myself in the community of receiving. Right? Exactly. Yeah. I, yeah, for sure. So for me, I think once I understood kind of where I came from and why I made the decisions I did based on that, it was that knowledge and awareness that made me decide you cannot continue this and you need to start to break the cycle, not just for you, but for everyone who's coming after me. And I, I do have children, I have a daughter and a son. And just as much as I want to set the example from, from my daughter, I want to set it for my son too, because his expectations need to be that, you know, you're not going to be served on hand and foot all the time. And that, you know, you, 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 it's, it's an equal balance of, of support there. So definitely once I became a mother and I, Oh, and then, you know, working at the same time and trying to balance it all. And it's this idea of how do you balance it all? And I really don't think there is a perfect balance. Something <laughs> kind of, you know, gives at some point and then eventually you kind of find your own harmony within it all. So, um, so I think definitely in the last eight years, I've started to to gain these boundaries. And it was at a time into actually nine years, thinking we're still in 2020. So in 2012, I was uh, let go from a job that I had been at for quite a long time in the advertising industry. And I loved my job. I loved the people I worked with. I still do. And um, it was devastating. It was like, what do you mean? Like I've given everything to this job. I stayed late. I've not seen my daughter. I've given up, you know, time with her. And, and at the same time, like, I felt like I maybe didn't give enough. And, you know, what was it anyway? But it was a huge awakening for me to say, okay, now it time. was a blessing. <laughs> Got it. It was, a, it was, it was a blessing in disguise because I'll never forget the feeling walking out of those doors. It was like this weight had been lifted off my shoulders. As much as I loved what, what I did, I just knew intuitively and deep down, it just was not something that was going to fulfill me for ever and ever and ever. And that it was really kind of draining my soul <laughs> as I <laughs> continued it. So, um, so it was at that time that I had to decide, you know, what, what am I going to do? Am I going to go back to that rat race or am I going to do something that is going to fulfill me 
more that I can have more time with my family and still support it as well. So um, having been a person that identified with what I did for a living, with who I was as a person, that was tough to do. Mm -hmm. right? That I can imagine. That's a big one, right? Right. And don't we all do that? And mm -hmm. and even, you know, I struggle with that question. And I know we chatted about it earlier, but it's like, you know, you get that, you know, what do you do? Like, so what do you do? Right. And that was so hard for me after when I when I was starting my business and I was getting into yoga and I was starting my empowerment project, it was like, well, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm trying to start a business. And so it just opened up more conversations basically, which, um, which was important and, and make me understand that it, you know, what I do for a living, the money I, you know, the income I bring in or, you know, what I do day to day doesn't define who I am and that, I, and, what I do end up doing as a vocation, I do also want to bring parts of me into it. Right. So that's important. Uh, so in as the story unfolds and, and the years went on, I realized that this is definitely what I was meant to do. And the boundaries I started creating was also releasing the guilt and the shame associated mm. with a lot of what had happened, right? Like, you know, knowing that I'm deserving of, you know, even though I've been home with the kids all day, let's say, and maybe, you know, I could still save the housework to the weekend or something, or, you know, it's this idea of, um, I, I just didn't, it, I didn't, I didn't want to fit into this mold of, you know, the, the mother who's home and, you know, doing everything for, for the, everyone else and nothing for yourself. Right. So um, it was tough. It was tough because I had a lot of guilt around that, a lot of guilt around that. So. And what kind of boundaries would you say you set in your home at that moment? Because you've got the kids, the cleaning, the this, what kind of boundaries for those listening, you know, that, can identify with that world you and what, what, what did that look like for you? Um, well, it, it took some time, but it, was, <laughs> it took time, but it was because you can set your schedules as much as you want. And that, and that could be what you do. You're, you know, you set, you set and plan the days, but at the end of the day, it's, it's letting go. It's letting go and, and the boundary is that you don't have to do it all and be all of it, okay? And, and have all your balls in the air juggling, right? So it's okay to let some of them fall. So it's okay to not have the toilets cleaned, you know, a couple of weeks or it's okay that the floors aren't cleaned or, you know, the laundry's piling up or whatever it is, but that I can release that and I had to talk to my husband about it, right? Because he, you know, had these expectations of, you know, and he's great, he helps a lot and all that, but it was sort of like, well, what's happening? So I was just like, listen, I'm not doing it because I'm lazy and I don't want to do it. It's that I have to put other priorities in there. Maybe I want- You say it so gently, because I wasn't that nice about it. I was <laughs> like, if you if it bothers you that much, then do it yourself. <laughs> I'm sure there was part of it in there. Like, <laughs> I just keep it real. I was just like, at that point, you're so excited to go into a new realm, but you're so scared at the same time that your own defense mechanism is just kind of like, you're so guarded, like you're, gu you're so guarded, right? Because, <laughs> well, yeah, because you, you don't want anybody to yeah. shut it down because you're now having the courage to move into this new space, right? Exactly, exactly. And and really it's like giving yourself permission. And it's not about like, it's like, you don't have to be okay with this mm -hmm. is what I said to, to my family. You don't have to be okay with it, but you have to respect my decision. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yeah, like you said, and, and if you want to do it yourself, go right ahead. I, I won't mind. <laughs> and so and it was, it's challenging not to, because I remember doing that with some dishes and certainly I don't want to turn it into that type of 
discussion. Yeah, sure. it, it was just it could be about the dishes. <laughs> it was. And I just thought, you know what? I just I just left it and I let it pile up. And everybody in the house was kind of like, okay, well, and I was just like, if it bothers you guys that and I was equally right across the board. If it bothers you guys that much, you're well, you're you're capable of doing it, clean it up. You know, what was the backlash? Why this? You're being stubborn, you're you know, you're just doing it to prove a point. And I was like, okay. So you do go through that. So I'm not going to paint it to anybody like it's a bed of roses. It's about what you said, giving yourself permission to stick through it and be consistent with the narrative that you mean this. Exactly. And that it's true. Exactly. And I think the other part of boundaries too is knowing when to say no. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, I was listening. I don't know if anyone's on Clubhouse. Are you on Clubhouse, Tanya? Uh, no, but I heard about it. Somebody just mentioned it yesterday. Too. Yeah, yeah. So co really cool new plat. Well, I want to say new. It's been around for a, a, just over a year, but it's gaining traction now. It's gaining quite a lot of traction. And so you kind of listen in on different discussions and you can talk. So I was in a mom kind of group and someone was saying how I'm tired of being called a strong woman because you know, being a strong woman almost says that, you know, you can keep adding things to my plate, but my plate is full and I don't need anything else added to my plate. So stop trying to say that, oh, she's this super woman, super power, strong female that's doing it all. And she was like, no. <laughs> I, I got my stuff going, I got things going, but I don't need anything else added. So when I saw that, I'm like, those are boundaries. And I love that. Mm -hmm. So it's knowing when to say no, I've, I'm, you know, I have enough. I don't have time for that right now. I love you, but I need to say no. And, and knowing what, what to choose and what to prioritize right. that uh, you, you do want to do. And it's hard. It's hard with family. It's so hard with family because sometimes family and boundaries are not even spoken in the same sentence. <laughs> well, it's interesting because I think it all goes hand in hand where we teach people, including our own children, including our family members, how to treat us. And we treat, um, we treat we allow them to treat us the way we treat ourselves on a subconscious level. Like let's call a spade a spade. Yes. So we Love now that. come in and we're carrying these beliefs and all that. And, and I just want to kind of speak in a different way about the power and change perspectives a little bit. Cause I love when people think, say that I'm a powerful woman. I actually embrace it because in my mind, what goes through my mind when they say that is a woman of courage, mm. a woman of courage that can set boundaries a woman of courage, that's where my power lies. Yeah. And the courage, the power that I have to have the courage to take things off my plate so that I have wiggle room in my life. Mm -hmm. That's where my personal power exists. So I get what you're saying because I was you, not you personally, but I was that woman that when people said she's a powerful woman, I'm like, no, I'm not strong. I'm not powerful. I'm weak. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And really it was just... All facade. <laughs> yeah, like... You know, and I thought, and I woke up one day and I thought, well, I want to be a powerful woman. I want to be a strong woman. I want to take own my personal power. But what does that look like? And I had to redefine that. And redefining that meant, like everybody knows that even today, I take a nap in the day. So anybody knows there's an hour window in the, in the day that I schedule in a nap. Non-negotiable. So good. <laughs> and my kids knew it from a young age. Mom takes a nap in the day. It didn't start out that easy. I didn't take a nap. I was working on three, four hours sleep, being a mom, doing it all. Bathrooms are clean, clean. This is being done. Cooking's being done. Shopping's being done. And when I redefined being powerful as a woman, that definition came through courage. Well, I have the courage to create these boundaries and I have the power within me to create these boundaries mm -hmm. and to set a new direction for myself so for anybody out there i'm challenging us all women to redefine what power and strength looks like mm -hmm. i love that i love that i agree i totally agree and you're right it's it's how you define that word and 
and the trigger in you, right? And I think for this particular woman, she was definitely triggered by that word in right. negative ways. So for her, it was like, no, I don't have any more time or room. And yeah, you're right. I, I don't necessarily, I'm not really triggered by the word power. I, I do love it. I, I mean, my company's called the empowerment. <laughs> so, so I love, yeah, I totally love the word, but you're right. I, I love how it's, we can shift the narrative into bravery and courage yes. and, and um, setting ba healthy boundaries that support you. Um, I'm just going to write in here. I have Shar writing and I laid down the law too. So I went back a little bit ago. Maria, it took some time for me too. And it's still a process at times. Of course, it is always a process. Shar writes back, um, that's how women feel. They have to be to get accolades. You are correct, Shar. And Tara writes in, I also hate uh, that. I also hate that because it implies that generally women are not strong and being strong means you have, you have to say no. So thank you, Tara, for that. And Shar writes back, exactly, you set your boundaries for being strong. <laughs> exactly. And it's true, like, you don't hear people saying, oh, it's a, he's a strong man. You know, why, you know, why does it even have to be part of the sentence? So I kind of like what Tara said, too, that it doesn't, yes. you know, doesn't even have to be part of our, our sentence. Um, right. We're just, we are, I like to go from a place of love, that I love myself so much that I am going to set up, um, I'm going to, I'm going to set my life up that reflects the, the highest, the highest expression of self-love. And this is what it looks like. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, going back to what we were first talking about around society and, and cultural conditions that you know we're not really promoted to to talk about loving ourselves and <laughs> in, in like a, in like a nice like we're supposed to be like oh don't say that about myself and oh I'm not pretty and oh no 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 like in in it's let's downplay let's just downplay right. everything so and that it's it's more egotistical to, to feel love for yourself and to, um, but, you know, I've always often said, and this is a lot of what we talk about, even with um, the empowerment project, because we work with children too. We work with high school kids, which is amazing. And they have a hard time saying even one positive thing about themselves. And we'll say, well, what, what is it? Like, what is holding you back? Well, I don't want to seem like, you know, stuck up. Okay, so here's the difference. By you saying, I am beautiful, let's say. Self love is I am beautiful. And so are you. Right. Ego <laughs> is I am the most beautiful and you are ugly. So do you see the difference now? And then they're like, yes, I, okay, I see the difference now. But again, it's it's that whole kind of societal thing is you know downplay, put yourself last, selflessness, and but if uh, you can't accept yourself, you will really truly never authentically be able to accept somebody else on that deeper level because you haven't been able to do that for yourself. And I think it's so important to be able to do that work and to teach the younger generation how to embrace. And I love the way that you just frame that in terms of it's a collective beauty. Yeah. Um, and I say that as well, like you're sitting here, Andrea, you're sitting here and you are good at what you do and owning your strengths and being good at what you do, just owning it, just, you don't have to be strong in it or not. You're just owning the truth and the truth sets us free. And Andrea is a phenomenal individual and she does her yoga and mindfulness practices very well. She runs the empowerment project at, at, at its finest. But you never once said that you're the best and you're better than anybody. Exactly. What you said is, I own who I am and the truth of who I am. And I'm comfortable with being able to express my knowledge and the truth of all the goodness within me through that. Mm -hmm. And isn't that what authenticity is? Yes. You know, I, I, I don't care if someone's being original or creative or whatever, call it what you want. At the end of the day, if you're being authentic to who you are, then 
that's all that matters. And I think and it, it takes time. It comes with experience and it comes with, I don't know, I, I guess it comes with age because experience comes with age too, right? <laughs> but yeah, and, and when so when I started to accept my authenticity and, and lead from there, take my gifts and share it from that space of authenticity, it it just blossomed and and you're right that i that that ego to the egoism or even any feelings of uh lack or you know who who are you to teach this and who are you to to you know instruct or guide someone through their life that all went away that all went away and it's like well who am i not to do this right and then you start to show, people start to show up when you own it. And I always say it, it starts on the inside with you. And even if it's just a little bit like this, like, so you don't have to have this enormous feeling. It can be like, you know, that little mustard seed, they say, of faith, they call it. But that little feeling of owning it, it opens up. And you're actually, so I'm going to add a little la another layer to it, is when you're owning that truth and you're grateful for owning who you are, that feeling, that gratitude, that ownership allows people to show up in your life to celebrate that with you and want to share that with you and want to experience that through you. Yes. And it's so beautiful. It's <laughs> I'm going to interject so here. Um, uh, we have here uh, Tara. Okay. Tara's writing, being a woman means we are inherently strong. Um, Tara says, we agree agree with having boundaries and self-love and good role modeling for children and people around you even when it's not easy I agree thank you and Shara saying she agrees with Tara and Shara says keeping it real <laughs> so I'm not sure at what point of our conversation that all that yeah. came in but there we go thank you yes and um I yeah I think that's so that's so well put and I think when when I started to realize that if I wasn't taking care of myself, nobody else was, and I'm not going to build resentment <laughs> towards the people around me because it's not their job to fill my cup. Mm, responsibility and accountability just to thyself. <laughs> right? And you know, they allow my cup to run it over, really. I want to come as a complete person, right? Not, you know, anyone needing to complete me. Sorry, Jerry Maguire. <laughs> <laughs> Oldest movie. Right, right, right. Right. It, it, it's interesting that you say that because what happens when you make you a priority back to the title of, you know, making yourself priority by creating boundaries. Really, it's set, making yourself a priority that you can learn how to love yourself in a healthy way. And once you do that, people want to be a part of that. They want to be attached to that goodness within you. And you can show up for yourself in a healthy way. You can show up for others in a healthy way. And that just spills over through osmosis. You know, um, it was mentioned here in the chat that, you know, we're leading as role models and by examples. Mm -hmm. and that allows us to create this space to receive because I said the most unselfish thing that we can learn how to do especially as women is learn how to receive and I say it again because it's people are like what did you just say the most unselfish thing that you can do in this lifetime is to learn how to receive right because when you're full you're talking about the cup is full then you have something to give mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. exactly exactly and you're right in that when I, I noticed when I started to set these healthy boundaries and, you know, say no to certain things and be open to receiving, you also attract that. And the, the stuff that's not serving just disappears. You know, disappears. <laughs> it dissolves. <laughs> just magically dissolves. And it's, um, it's, it's quite uh, beautiful to see and to witness. And it's, um, uh, yeah, it's, I, I would have never um, believed it 
unless I truly lived it. So yeah, it's so good. It's so good. Tara writes in a good point here. I have also learned if I'm not clear what my boundaries are, how can people respect them or honor them if I'm not honoring them for myself? And that is so true. Know thyself. Mm -hmm. Yes, Tara, that is so true. And sometimes we may not know our boundaries right away. We're mm -hmm. still learning what they are. We and because we are trying to change whatever it is that we've been conditioned to believe for mm -hmm. however many years. Mm -hmm. So it's that unlearning, and and as you mentioned, teaching others how to treat us. Mm -hmm. And it's it's challenging because people are like what do you mean but i've t i've treated you this way for so long and why all of a sudden now you, you're not accepting it or you're you know putting boundaries and it's like well this is what i've decided and it's just coming to that when the the i, I made a comment um in one of the earlier shows that i had done when tanya talks first launched and it's the old the new mind will not meet the old world so for anybody doing the self-help work and you know on this journey to become our greatest and higher selves and reach our full potential the heart that you attracted that space that energy that feeling that you attracted those old characters in your play they just can't exist unless they're doing the work with you mm -hmm. so they really do dissolve so i always say to people it's okay you know, you're not being mean, you're, and you know, the big, the, the, one of the biggest challenges that we're faced with when we're doing this work and we're transitioning into our new space is we feel bad because they're great people. And it's just like, I get it, but it's just, it's where the, we're, the energies are just not in sync mm -hmm. and it's okay in a very loving and healthy way. They kept you safe. They kept you there. They kept you you enjoyed it, you, you were loving each other the best way you knew how, but it's just time to, it's, it's okay. It's just time to move on. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, you know, they may not realize it at the time, but it is the best decision for them too. Like, absolutely. You know, it, there's a reason for everything, right? And um, it, it sometimes takes time to know that, to understand that, especially when you're on the end of, that sort of pain mm -hmm. and, and you have to work through that. Um, and, and usually that's kind of where a lot of your learning comes from, right? And a lot of transformation comes from the, the shadow and the, and the darkness and the pain that you go through. And that what kind of helps you see the light, I guess. <laughs> So anybody that stays home, because I've been at home with my children and the misconception is women when you say, and you said it earlier on in the show, is um, that because you're home that you have time to do things. So all of a sudden, everybody, your family members, everybody and their brother are calling you to get things done. And you're like, guys, I can't get it done, but you, you're somehow spreading yourself thin. And I remember creating boundaries around that. That was pretty, that was a tough one. So, and I'm speaking to a lot of the moms out there because I know a lot of you guys out there that are home and, um, you know, it, it, it's just, you have to set boundaries around that just because you're home doesn't mean you're available to the whole world. <laughs> yes. And I, a hundred percent, there are many women out there right now that are feeling that just that overwhelm and I felt it when my kids were home. Now, my son is seven, my daughter's 11. And my daughter wasn't too bad because she's pretty self-sufficient. But homeschooling a seven-year-old is really hard. Mm -hmm. And oh, and, and I think for him, it was sort of like, but you're here. Like, why do I have to ask my teacher when you're here? And I'm like, because I'm not your teacher. I'm your mom. So yes, I'll make your lunch, but I'm not helping you with your math homework that your teacher just explained for the last 25 minutes. So, but I had to understand I'm speaking to a seven-year-old. So know your audience too, right? So what I ended up having to do was out of sight, out of mind. Mm -hmm. So I put him in his room with his own device 
And I said, do not call me unless it's an emergency. So he had to figure it out. And it was tough because I know he knew I was just downstairs. And, but, and I had to set that boundary because, you know, I would listen and I'd be like, is he, you know, is he getting that is, you know, and so I had to say, okay, stop, just, if he doesn't get it. And I would hear the teacher telling him, you know, stop spitting in your chair, <laughs> stop, <laughs> stop putting that in your mouth. What's that in your mouth? He'd say, she'd say, and I'm like, yeah. but I had to, but you're teaching him how to love himself too, because you're teaching him how to problem solve on his own because then we rescue them and then we enable them. And then when they, when we fast forward like 20 years from now and they're not able to problem solve on their own and we wonder why and we're frustrated with them, we've never trusted that in their ability to be able to, um, to be able to solve it on their own. And that was a big one for me. It was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> yeah. you know what? I I've got to give you this, like, I'm actually, showing you how to love yourself by do and myself like I'm trusting us and my ability to remove myself to say I trust that you have everything in you to solve this exactly you're that absolutely right and and like you detach from it too right because I think a lot of what boundaries what what you need for boundaries is detachment because you know, we cling to so many things in our life, right? We cling to the relationships, to the people, to material things, to everything. And, you know, in, in yoga, and I, I love so much of the philosophy, but it, it is centered around this idea of no clinging, but no aversion. So it's that balance of like, you don't need that, but it's not that you don't like it. It's sort of, you know, you'll, you'll use it if you need it, but you know how to let it go as well. So um, yeah, not sort of having, you know, me at the door peeking in on his schoolwork at the same time as me saying, do it on your own, right? Like right. I have to detach from that situation. Try having that with your daughter who lives in a whole nother country during a pandemic and going to school. <laughs> you imagine. I can't. I'm like, Okay, honey, you're on your own. I can't help you. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can imagine. Totally. She's calling and, and we're like, sweetie, you got to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, but it, you know, it's developing. I, I'm embracing it. I want to just go a little on a sideline here because we talk about creating boundaries with others. And that's actually, believe it or not, as hard as we say it is, it's actually easier than what I'm about to say. Okay. Um, how do we create boundaries with our own self? Because we are our own greatest sabotagers, right? We're in our own way so much. What does that look like for us to create boundaries within ourselves? Well, I think it comes down to knowing yourself, knowing the excuses you make, <laughs> um, right? I'm very good at that. <laughs> yes, aren't we all? And I know for me, it's being mindful. 100%, the, the definition of mindfulness is presence mm -hmm. so, and, and awareness. So as soon as I see myself making that excuse, it's not passive. It's like, okay, Andrea, you're making an excuse again. You know, you need to get this done. Or, okay, you're making an excuse why, okay, you know what, maybe you will give yourself a break today and, and do something else. It's, but um, so much of our day is on autopilot where we're just going through the motions. And when I really started to become more in tune with my thoughts and what I'm telling myself and those excuses and those limiting beliefs, that's when I was able to have better boundaries with myself. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I recently, well, not recently, it's been, it's been almost a year now where I've been waking up earlier, um, because this whole idea of self-care and, you know, how do you fit it in and, and, you know, how do you get time away? And sometimes it does mean getting up before the rest of the house. And, um, I'll be honest, I am a bear and I love to sleep. <laughs> so... <laughs> I take a nap in the day, remember? Yes, right? I need to do that. 
so yeah so so you know setting my alarm and getting up earlier it was like I'll tell you how often my brain and was just saying just go back to bed what are you doing and and it was kind of catching myself in that and like any practice the more you do it the better you get so the more you continue to set those boundaries and and stop making those excuses and be more mindful and all that you really are training your brain mm -hmm. the end of the day and like you're working out weights to build up your muscles <laughs> you're working out that muscle in your brain and you know we love we love teaching this to kids too because um I think as you know, I mean, anyone really, when you're thinking about the brain and how the brain works, it's almost like, well, this is kind of how I am. This is who I am. This is my personality. I'm not going to change it, but it's not true. I mean, you can change our, our brain is neuroplastic. It's moldable. It's pliable. We can, we can actually you change. feed it new information in it. <laughs> exactly. How do we create memories? How do we right. create, you know, different feelings associated with different things? So we, we have the ability. It's, do you want to put the effort in in the practice? That's another. That's we can go on a whole other conversation yeah. with that because that really is a big conversation of right. understanding what drives us, what motivates us, etc. Just going to go back here, um, just in relation to your son. You know, especially high energy boys. Tara, I can't read that. I'm Tara, apologize. It's long, uh, but basically she understands your world. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look at the, all the comments when I'm done. <laughs> so uh, the best thing that you can do for your children, I was a big enabler for my two boys. We, I think most parents can identify with that. Uh, Shar writes in, not just you, it's also your spouse and it's so true. We women, again, we take on all the, I remember one day taking off an imaginary backpack and opening it up and taking all the stuff out. And I was like, okay, this belongs to you. This belongs to you. This belongs to you. I don't want it anymore. And I felt so much lighter just metaphorically taking off this backpack. I'm not carrying everybody's stuff anymore. So you are right, Char, with your partner. And uh, Tara, I'll speak to you off offline <laughs> with her next question. <laughs> but um, I want us to look at the idea of the boundaries when you know we're feeding it new information. I'm about getting to the core of the feeling of the connection to thyself. And I find that when we are doing this work and we're getting to know ourselves more deeply and we ask the questions, you know, who am I, what do I want? And we start to really hone in on the experience of life that we want to have and how we want to live it and how we want to experience one another and the type of friendships and relationships we want to be in. I'm going to tell you that 90% of the people I work with they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so far off. <laughs> like I'm so nowhere close to the truth of who I am, where I want to be. And in that moment, I always say, let that be a motivation for you to set some boundaries for yourself in your life. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, whatever that looks like, you have to make the conscious decision to understand that if it means that much to you, how much do you really have those, want those experiences? With friendships, it just means sometimes you don't have those conversations. You don't enable that friend to take up all of your time to talk about the same story that you've both been talking about for 20 years that's getting you nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Or that's just drains you. And yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, but I think it's okay, you know, and it goes back to this idea of self-awareness, you know, it's okay that you maybe, and like you said, use that as a motivation. It's okay that you may not be where you want to be, but it's not, it's never too late. No, not at all. <laughs> right. It's never too late. And, but I, I think a lot of people, and again, I want to, you know, say a lot of women is sort of like, you know, I'm, this is my life and this is, I'm stuck with it. And I'm just going to live in my misery. I don't know how to be any, any different, you know? So it's, I'm comfortable here. Like I'm comfortable in this like self-loathing, giving up myself for everyone else place. But when, when you start to bring out that awareness, then they say, well, no, I am, I'm not okay with this. Mm -hmm. So Okay. Then let's make the choice to do better. Right. When we know better, we do better. Right. So let's, let's make that choice. And and that's why they need to work with you one-on-one -on -one so that they can Which is learn how to. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it's always good. It, and, and I, you know, in, in what we do in the empowerment project, we talk about the four cornerstones of change and it's the knowledge, the effort, the practice. And the last part is the support. Mm -hmm. Cause I really, we really believe that people need support to really see that shift. So whether it is a coach, a therapist, a very, very um, trusted friend. And, and I, and I, you know, I emphasize trusted friend um, that can help you and guide you because um, you are always going to want to fall back on what you know and what's familiar and what's kind of the easy way out um, because you will constantly get tested. You will get tested. Those boundaries will be tested and um, you, you need that person to- I'm smiling because you're like, through. <laughs> My whole life I've been tested. Right? Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, you need that, you need that support. And and that's something else I realized too. And um even more recently, you know, during during COVID is that, you know, I had to really look at who my support system was and who I needed to put get on my team and get part of my tribe. Um, you know, we, we need that tribe. And even if that tribe is one person, you and that person are a tribe. So, and that's okay too. But um, yeah, and, and, and who do I want to spend my time with? And who do I want to give my energy to? Because it's very precious, my time and my energy. Mm -hmm. And um, I have to be I have to be selfish with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or, uh, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm just, just because I, I, I am triggered, I'm saying it on national, like, you know, global TV, that I'm triggered when I hear the word selfish because it does have such, it's like saying earlier on when you talked about powerful woman and the, 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 the connotation that goes with it, what's attached to it. And when I hear women say that I have to be selfish, I actually, believe that they're learning how to be loving but society has told us to communicate it as selfishness and i'd like to change that narrative and when women get to that point where they have to feed themselves it's not being selfish i'm learning how to love myself and that's what i want to teach my children and anybody around me to do is how to love themselves so it's important and it is essential for my soul for every fiber of my being my health to be able to be loving to mm -hmm. me. Exactly. Yes. And I apologize out there. I like, you know, I, I get triggered by the word self. And, but that's but we're triggered because that's what we're made to believe that that right. word is 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 you know wrong to say or it's 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 negative. Mm -hmm. And no, and it's it's great to change to change that into I'm learning how to love myself. Exactly. And I'm teaching others. I'm being an example for others to love, to love the, uh, themselves too. Right. And the healthy Italian by Fina. Oh, Fina. Uh -huh. Fina. Okay. She says a hundred percent. So, I don't know. <laughs> so, you know, I just, uh, yeah. So I just, those creating boundaries, I, I feel are so important. And boundaries are really I like the way Tara said it earlier on is, um, you know, it's knowing thyself more deeply and it is knowing thyself and allowing that to emerge in your everyday life is, is being you. This mm -hmm. is, this is just you and creating boundaries or setting standards for yourself to live by. Exactly. And, and living, to your values and and mm -hmm. that's what i i had to do when i first started kind of on this path was sort of okay well what are my values what do i value most what are my non-negotiables mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know they and in you know my list kind of changes every once in a while right. depending on you know life and stages and whatever but yeah like what are those values and what um so when you're when you're faced with the challenge or when you're put up against the wall you know you know what these are my values yeah. and now i know what to do because 
I'm not swaying, right? So that's also a good way, you know, when people ask me, well, where do I start? I'll say, okay, well, what are your values? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Okay, well. I, you know what? It is not that easy. People think it's easy. This is what I value. It's actually not that easy to know top, top five values. It isn't. It isn't easy. Um, and, you know, it takes time to think about it. It's like, well, what, what is it? And then, and it's almost like when you start to write them down and start to understand it, then you start to be aware of, wow, like I, I don't pay much attention to that at all. <laughs> right? Like, let's say health, right? Let's say health is I, in your top three mm -hmm. of, of priorities and values okay, well, what are you doing to support your health every day? Not much. Are you eating well? Are you exercising? Are you, you know, and a lot of people will be like, no, but, but I don't want to get sick. I know you don't. But let's go back to the beginning part of what we talked about the rabbit in, cause you're getting the bottom ends of the, right. You're getting the neck and the skull. Right? <laughs> so when you say that to me, that's what it reminds me of what you said earlier on um is that so yeah so I value this but what are you doing well I'm getting the leftovers of the day so I've got nothing left to 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 feed that value that means something to me exactly and, and again that's the awareness so mm -hmm. now you know what are you going to choose to do um and and that's a big part again of what we what we say with the empowerment project is that happiness is a choice mm -hmm that you choose every single day. And I'm not saying you can't have a bad day and you can't feel unhappy one day, but how long are you going to live in that? How long are you going to dwell before you make the choice? Okay, let's decide to move forward. Let's learn from this. Let's move forward and, and um, be, be better, learn more and, uh, it's a choice. And I tell my kids that all the time when, you know, if I remember my son coming home one day saying, Oh, so-and-so said this to me and he made me feel bad. And I said, okay, well, you have a choice. Do you want him to make you feel bad or not? Well, no, I don't want him to make you feel bad. Okay. So I know what he said wasn't nice, but do you believe that? No. Then there you go. You don't have to feel bad about it. Mm -hmm. He just said something that wasn't nice, but he doesn't have to make you feel anything. You make yourself feel that. Mm -hmm. But it's all and you're usually when you're triggered by something, right? Like meaning that it bothered him because it was already active in him, mm -hmm. and they're too young to understand that. Yeah. But I call seed planters. So I, I like what you did because you know it, when we when we take that time to to step back, slow our life down to be able to communicate and have that dialogue and that conversation with our children. And we do it repeatedly, that repetition, eventually one day the light bulb goes off. For them. Yeah, exactly. That, and that's all we're trying to do. You know, I, I love when I overhear my kids saying, um, my daughter will say it to my son and she'll say, you know, just be grateful for what you have. Okay. <laughs> her like preteen voice right. and he said, but I just want another Lego set and she'll say just be grateful for what you have and I'm like yeah it's okay it's not like it's getting through right 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 yeah. it's not all it's not always going to get through but like you said planting the seeds leading by example and eventually it'll it'll sink yeah. in so my girls think that they know too they're like mom we know way too many things about ourselves that we want than we want to know just because of who we are. We're way too <laughs> self-aware. Yeah, like and I'm like, okay, well, I said one day you'll thank me, not today. I want to just touch it. We've got five minutes left, and I just want to say this about boundaries. Boundaries, especially in household units, means that you have to start sharing the responsibility. Mm -hmm. That's a tough one. Yes, it is. And allowing that other person to do that. So, right. Cause I know, you know, I, I'm very guilty of this. And so I do all the cooking in the house. My husband doesn't cook. He'll warm up stuff, but he can make a bowl of pasta, but that's pretty much about it. But when he, he, he will say the odd time, you know, let me make dinner tonight. And I'll be like, okay. 
and I'm kind of peeking into the kitchen, like, you're really going to cut it like that? Right. And so, yeah, it's like, I have to step back and, and I really had to do that. And when I, yeah, when I, when I said, listen, I can't do this all, I'm busy, you know, can you handle the vacuuming this week or, can, and you have to delegate, you got to tell them they're, they're not going to be mind readers. Do we want our husbands to offer? Of course. Are they going to? No, usually they're not going to. And in all fairness, we never gave them a reason to. And I think exactly. it takes generationally of many women down the line that, you know, I think that our women, women from the younger generation have a fighting chance because I think our generation, we're changing that narrative with our little girls. Yeah. And I think that- And boys. And Right. I was going to say, I think men are changing that narrative with their sons as well. And um, so it is changing. Will it change for our generation? Probably not. <laughs> yeah, there's hope, right? <laughs> old habits, old habits, they, they're hard to break. But no, and, and exactly. So yeah, in his defense, I never really said it at the beginning, or, you know, I never really implemented it. So now that I've said it, um, then he knows. And it's like, yeah. And I don't question, I don't say, oh, you know, you missed a spot or whatever. It's sort of like, give them the responsibility fully mm-hmm. and completely. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was a, there was a guru that out there that said, um, life has a way of taking care of itself. Mm-hmm. It doesn't need your help. So whether you take care of something or not, it'll still take care of itself. Yes. So I thought it was kind of, you know, wrapping my head truly around that concept. I could breathe when I really could connect to that, to let it go. Yes. And you're right. If it's not swept properly or if it's not cut up properly, it's still taken care of. I don't have to control it all. Absolutely. Just let it go. Yes. So we have two more minutes and uh, for the show, for ten, it's been a very fun I show. I can't believe how fast that is. I know, it go, I'm telling you, <laughs> you just get warmed up and started and it's like, oh, we got to go. I know. Um, <laughs> it's wonderful. Yeah, it's, uh, so it's been fun. Um, any last little nugget for our audience of, you know, what it looks like to set boundaries for yourself to make you a priority? Um, you know, I, I think it's just release, you know, as you were saying, let go of any shame, let go of the guilt, um, just continue to show up for yourself, release judgment, judgment on yourself that, you know, if you're doing it right or wrong, there's no right or wrong. It's what's best for you. Mm-hmm. and what feels good for you. If you feel good doing everything in the house, then do it. Right. You know, some people, that's their therapy. They love to clean. Mm-hmm. Do it. Then do that. But, um, you know, just keep putting yourself as a priority, set that example and um, continue to show up. And like you said, everything will unfold and everything will take care of itself. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. So thank you. Andrea, thank you again. Again, you can find Andrea on Facebook um, under Andrea Bosco on Instagram under Andrea F Bosco. Um, And you can also find the empowerment project, which you can learn more about on her Facebook page under the empowerment project or Instagram, the empowerment project too. Um, If you are looking for breakthrough conversations, it's your life, your story, your experience, please visit thetaniaexperience.com and I'm ready to work with you to get your life to the next level. So thank you again, everybody, for tuning in. Andrea, thank you again for a great conversation this evening. Good night, everyone. Good night.